I promised you last week that inventory, it was going to pull back. But now the question is, by how much? And get ready, because the floodgates, well, they've opened, and inventory, it's just pouring onto the market right now, and we desperately need it. In this video, we're going to go over all the single-family and condo market data for the state of Massachusetts last week. Now, we're also going to take a look at the interest rates and do an update there and talk about the economic news that matters, which includes more information on the commercial real estate market. Because if you're looking for a crash, well, then there's smoke in this market. And you know what they say, when there's smoke, well, there's fire. And for the luxury home of the week, we're actually headed to a penthouse unit in the Millennium Tower. The views of this place are just crazy amazing. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions, then please feel free to reach out because I'm here to help. These multiple offer situations that we were involved in this weekend just got crazy. A 20 offer situation, a 30 offer situation, and then the much more reasonable 15 offer situation. Buyer demand, it's really strong right now. And the 30 offer situation was on a multifamily property, which the multifamily market is the weakest market of the three markets in the state of Massachusetts. And I break that all down in the April real estate re report, which looks the first quarter of real estate sales in the state of Massachusetts. If you haven't seen it, then you might want to take a look. I mentioned it last week, but in a 20 or 30 offer situation, it is so important to be ahead of the game when it comes to an offer strategy. If you're thinking about buying this summer, then it's time to talk right now. We need to get ahead of the game and do a little preparation. Proper planning, it's going to prevent some poor performance that could ultimately keep you from trying to rip the hairs out of your head. But now let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 2,901 single family homes on the market. Yes, inventory is down, but I told you it was going to happen last week because it was Easter week. I can also guarantee you that this current week will be a big inventory week. If you're a buyer, then get ready. The gap continues to narrow, but I don't necessarily think it's a 100% true comparison as we're comparing it to an Easter week this year to a regular week last year. But nonetheless, the inventory gap narrowed to 252 units. There are only 252 more units on the market today than there were this time last year. And I expect this to widen next week, but it can't be ignored that we are very, very close to when we hit a historical low amount of inventory just one year ago. We had 675 houses that came on the market this week. Now, this was way down from the 1,010 units that we saw last week, but it really wasn't a bad comparison when you compare it to Easter week of this year compared to Easter week of last year. In fact, when you do that, it's compared to 868 units that went on the market last year, which means we were about 22% off, which has kind of become the standard in regards to week your year-over-year -year inventory amount adjustments. Pendings were strong. However, keep in mind that it makes sense to see a lot of properties go under agreement this week. As we had so many listings come on the market last week, there's always just a one-week lag from inventory going on the market this week and then going under agreement next week. Just think of it this way, right? A house goes on the market today, but showings aren't going to start until ultimately Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Then they're going to take a look at offers over the weekend and maybe accept one on Monday or Tuesday. Hence why you see that one-week lag when it comes to the new listings to under agreements. We had 883 single-family homes go under agreement, which is a pretty much in line with the 849-unit four-week rolling average that we've been seeing. And spoiler alert, expect that next week the number of units that went under agreement, well, that's going to be down quite a bit. There were 407 homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $725,000 and a median sales price of $580,000. And then that months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a strong seller's market. But the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market it is. This week, months of inventory actually decreased to 1.5 months compared to last week's 1.6 months. And this continues to indicate that it is a strong seller's market. Again, to be expected because inventory dropped. Real quick, I just wanted to give a shout out to John who sent me an email last week. He said that he sold his fifth generation home in October of 2022 and just bought a new one. 
a really great quote he shared. He said, he goes, I feel like a kid who just traded up his garbage pail cards for a set of every Red Sox rookie card, all because I listened to you and believed in your stats. And yes, real estate is truly local. I just wanted to thank you, John, personally. It really meant a lot to me to get that email. I just can't tell you how much I appreciated that note. This channel, it's become a passion of mine. I just got sick and tired of all the people giving some bad advice and passing national stats off as if they're the only stats I just couldn't stand the ignorance any longer. But as my wife points out with my other passion, which is fishing, rarely do passions pay the bills. So if you're thinking about buying or selling, then I appreciate you reaching out. As the only bigger joy I get than helping people achieve their real estate goals, it's keeping a roof over my little one's heads. Now on to the condo market. We have 1,980 condos on the market as of Monday. Inventory, it went down by 46 units, but again, that was because of the Easter holiday. Now, this one is crazy. The inventory gap between this year and the same time last year shrunk to 70 units from last week's 231 units. But just like in the single family market, I expect this gap to widen next week. Not by much, but it's going to widen. There were 337 condos that came on the market this week. The 337 units, when compared to the 411 units on Easter week last year, means that it really wasn't that bad of a showing. We had 399 condos go under agreement this week. This was actually a dip from last week when 421 condos went under agreement. Now, we know the under grid numbers next week are going to be affected by Easter, so this came as a little bit of a surprise. The four-week rolling average is 412 units. So 399, it isn't bad. I just thought it would have been stronger after 544 newly listed condos that came on the market last week. There were 196 condos that sold for an average sales price of $632,000 and a median sales price of $518,000. And then that month's of inventory dropped to 2.19 months from last week's 2.35 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. Interest rates were pretty much flat this week. Yes, they show that they ticked up a bit, but it was a negligible amount. But that will most likely change come Wednesday when the consumer price index numbers are released. If the CPI numbers come in higher than expected, then expect rates to make a big jump up. If it comes in lower, then expect rates to move down. And if it comes in as projected, then I'm actually thinking rates are going to go up slightly. This is the market mover when it comes to rates, as this is probably the biggest metric that the Fed looks at. For the last two weeks, I have been talking about the commercial real estate market. In case you missed it, this is going to be the shoe that ends up dropping. Everyone is looking for some crash in the real estate market. It's going to be here. Check this out. I mean, the title of the article should just scare you enough, but that's really not the scary part. Bloomberg notes that almost $1.5 trillion of U.S. commercial real estate debt comes due for repayment before the end of 2025. The big question facing those borrowers is, who's going to lend to them? And Morgan Stanley's James Egan writes that roughly $400 to $450 billion worth of commercial real estate loans are scheduled to mature in 2023. This is our part of 2022, and both of those years are the largest on record. From there, it doesn't get any easier as maturities climb each year until 2027, reaching over $550 billion. So what's the problem, you ask? As I've mentioned before, it's the regional banks that are the primary lenders to commercial real estate projects. You know, the regional banks, the ones that are under extreme pressure from deposit runs to larger banks, these guys, they're not lending anymore. And they're not going to do it anytime soon because they can't. So what are we looking at here? According to Morgan Stanley office and retail valuations could fall as much as 40% from peak to trough. This will create a feedback loop of liquidations, bank failures, defaults, and from there, even more liquidations. Commercial real estate is about to become the next subprime. Everyone was looking for fire, which made sense, but everyone jumped to the residential real estate market where the fundamentals, they've remained strong. All while there was a ton of smoke over there coming from the commercial real estate market. I feel like I need a loudspeaker to say this. The crash will not happen in the residential market. It has already started happening in the commercial real estate market. Oh, and a little bonus here. Multi-tenant apartment building sales dropped by 74% thanks to higher interest rates, turmoil of regional banks, and slowing rent growth. Sales of apartment buildings are falling at their fastest rate since subprime mortgage crisis. 
Looks like those interest rates are really starting to have an effect. And now onto the luxury home of the week, which is located at 1 Franklin Street, which is the Millennium Tower in Boston. We're specifically looking at the penthouse unit 4A. This is a 4,200 square foot, three bedroom, four full and one half bath condo. It is just one floor below the grand penthouse that had a record sale price in Boston. Let's start with the views though. I'm pretty sure standing on the balcony is the equivalent of Leonardo DiCaprio standing at the front of the Titanic with his arms out. You have a stunning 180 degree view of the Charles River, the Boston Common, Harbor Islands, Back Bay, and Beacon Hill. The sunsets would be unreal from this private patio space. The indoor, it's no slouch either. You have three fireplaces, a custom chef's kitchen with marble counters and high-end appliances, plus service bar and pantry. Throughout, you're going to notice grand ceiling height that soars over 14 feet. And for the folks that live here, they quickly adapt to the five-star services with the doorman, 24-hour security club, restaurant and lounge, pool, fitness center, with sauna and steam, plus a brand new simulator game room, as well as two self or valet parking spaces. And in case you were wondering, that is what you can expect for a 6727 per month condo fee. The city is going to also ask you to pony up an additional $89,000 per year in property taxes. This stunning condo is being marketed with an asking price of $13,995,000. Want to talk about your personal real estate needs? I do the luxury house of the week, but just for fun. But my specialty and my love, it's actually helping the normal guy, not the people buying the $13 million penthouse apartments. And when it comes to helping people sell, my goal is to provide the same service that that $13 million penthouse guy gets, but for us, non $89,000 per year property taxpayer folks. Every person's home, well, it's their castle, and they deserve to be treated that way. My information, it's in the description below. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information and then I'm going to reach out to you. Whichever way works best and is easiest for you. I personally love talking in real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any of the uh, information or market data that we just talked about here, drop me a line in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer your questions. Until next time.